Good morning, Elam. Welcome. We're glad that you are joining us this morning. Um, one of the things I'm really excited to share with you today is that Jordan St. Cyr is going to be leading worship and sharing a little bit about compassion with us today. Jordan is a talented and well-respected singer, songwriter, um, both in Canada and Nashville. He recently garnered five Covenant Awards from the Gospel Music Association of Canada, including Male Vocalist and Best Song of the Year. His new song, Fires, was released in 2020, and its message is resonating with believers everywhere during these unprecedented times. He lives with his wife, Heather, and their four children in Neverville, Manitoba, and together they serve as ambassadors for the Ministry of Compassion Canada. We are really excited to have Jordan with us today, and I know you're going to really enjoy what he has to share. Let's take a moment and bow before Jordan comes to, to share with us today. Heavenly Father, we bow before you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather as Christians from not just Winnipeg, but around the world online and to worship you. God, I pray that you would speak to us through Jordan, that we would be able to worship, worship you, that we would be able to hear just a little bit about what's going on around the world. God, may your spirit work in our lives and may we be your hands and reach out to our friends and neighbors and the people around the world as you've called us to do. We pray all this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Well, good morning, church. This is Jordan Saints here, and I am so grateful to be here with you this morning, uh, even if only virtually, because I still believe there's so much power in singing the name of Jesus. So let's set our hearts and our minds on him this morning, and let's sing together, all right? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Yeah, yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me All that you've done for me yeah. Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The King of glory, the King of glory Who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings yeah yeah this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would Christ, oh, you lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Yes, Lord, all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain 
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is unfailing love That you would take my place, God That you would bear my cross Oh, you lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me All that you've done for me All that you've done for me, God All that you've done for me, God Oh, we sing your praise, Lord We sing your praise, God We give it all to you, we give it all to you, Lord. In Nahum 1 verse 7, it says, The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust him. And in this next song, it talks about being led through the fire. In darkest nights, he is close like no other. And I believe in times like these, God is asking for our full and complete trust, knowing that uh, in him we find our security, our peace, and uh, we start to understand his goodness in a whole new way. I love you, Lord Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I am held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God In all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, your goodness is running after It's running after me your goodness is running after, it's running after me With my life laid down, I surrender now I give everything Your goodness is running after, it's running after me Let's sing that out Your goodness is running after, it's running after me
been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are good. And that no matter our circumstances, you stay the same. You remain constant in your goodness. Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are in our lives and that you care for what we're going through right now, personally and culturally as a, as a one world. Lord, you care so deeply of what we are going through. And Lord, I'm so grateful that you are near to the brokenhearted because there are so many of us going through stuff right now. And Lord, I just want to pray over these people. Help them know your nearness. Help them know your peace. Father, we could all use more revelation of your nearness and your peace. Father, thank you for who you are. Amen. Three years ago, around this time, my wife and I found ourselves on a plane headed for Managua, Nicaragua, and we were going to visit our compassion child, Catherine. And uh, I remember we were talking about kind of our expectations about this trip, things we were going to see. And, you know, I knew we were were going to see some extreme poverty, you know, a lot of sickness, um, you know, maybe a lot of, you know, fearful people. And we, we saw a lot of that. But we did not see that in Catherine. I remember when we got to the Compassion Center, there was a lot of people there. And I remember uh, seeing Catherine for the first time. Uh, She was with her dad and her younger brother, and she was there with her school teacher as well. And I just remember seeing a light in her eyes, an anticipation. You know, uh, they they were looking for us, and we finally made our way over. And we introduced ourselves and she just leapt out at my wife and gave her a huge hug and they just wept tears of joy. It was just an amazing first meeting. Shortly after, we uh, had the opportunity to go for lunch and before we dug into our meals, uh, Catherine's teacher just asked if she would pray. You know, Catherine at this point was 16 years old. When I was 16, uh, I would be hard pressed to, to speak in public at all, but Catherine took to it like like nothing. And she spoke with such conviction, such power. She not only blessed our meal, but she blessed each and every one of us sitting at that table. You know, she displayed such a vigor and a passion uh, for Jesus. Uh, She spoke, uh, she knew exactly who she was speaking to. This was the King of her heart, the Lord of her life. And uh, she made us believe that. And at that moment, the light bulb just went on for me because, you know, for my wife and I, we had been sponsoring children through Compassion for the last 13 years. And we knew that our financial contribution was, you know, helping uh, meet the needs of of kids around the world. Um, You know, they were getting fed and drinking clean water and all that good stuff. But at this moment, I knew that, uh, you know, our small financial contribution Uh, helped Catherine know who Jesus was. And so that's really what I want to talk to you uh, today about, is the work that Compassion does around the world and the calling we have as believers to be a voice uh, for the world's most vulnerable. So with so much going on in 2020, I found personally to be so distracted. And maybe uh, distraction isn't the right world, but, you know, we we went through so much this last year. You know, there was a lot of gender equality stuff, uh, racial uh, equality. Uh, You know, we had the presidential election and all the political tensions that we were going through. We had wildfires in the U.S. and in Australia. There was famine and there were plagues in Africa. There was just so much to look at. And I just felt like, you know, my heart was being divided. You know, I felt pulled to the left and pulled to the right. But the whole time, as I kind of quieted down and refocused on God, I found that He was knocking on my heart the whole time and asking me to look up. He was asking me, Jordan, will you participate in the work that I am doing? 
Let's take a look at Ephesians 2, uh, verses 7 to 10. So if you have a Bible or maybe a, a phone app, open that up and let's take a look at this. I'm reading from the NIV version. And it says, now God has us where he wants us. That's right. Even in the pandemic, he has us where he wants us. And it says, with all the time in this world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus, saving is all his idea and all his work. All we have to do is trust him enough to let him do it. Our job is to trust. It's God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we'd go around bragging that we'd done the whole thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and the saving. And this is the part I want to dig into. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he has gotten ready for us to do, work we had better be doing. So what is this work that God has prepared for us to do? Well, I believe that work is always sharing the gospel, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I believe that the way that this message comes across the best is when we love practically, right? So for most of us, uh, 2020 was maybe the first time in our lives when uncertainty became very real, right? But for the vast majority of our world, this is where they live. They live in uncertainty. And I believe uh, the way that we can show them the gospel is to love them practically. Back in March or April uh, of last year, I found myself at Costco, you know, like most of us, and I was in line. Uh, but this time the line was a little longer. Uh, I came out the front door, went all the way back to this fence and went, you know, maybe another thousand feet, right, uh, down behind some of these box stores. It was a long line. But, you know, I thought to myself, you know, it should move pretty quick. It's Costco. Everybody goes uh, pretty fast there. So I went to the back of the line and uh, not a minute later, uh, one of the Costco attendants came out and said, you know, thank you everybody for your patience, uh, but uh, it's going to be about a two and a half hour wait uh, for y'all to get inside. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I could just sense my pride bubbling over. It was not a good moment for me. And I kind of just had it. I was like, you know what? It's cold. Not today. I can come back at another time. And not a week later, I heard about this story in India where these people were lining up for food and they were lining up in this way because of the pandemic. And the lineup was three kilometers long. Now for these people at the end of their long, long wait, they received a small piece of bread and a cup of water. At the end of my, you know, not so long wait now, I would receive a cart full of groceries of you know, anything that I want that would supply enough food for my family of six for up to, you know, three plus weeks. The pandemic has been hard for North America. I don't want to downplay that. Um, but those living in poverty have experienced something so much heavier than we have. Experts predict that up to 30 years of development progress could be wiped out because of the ripple effect of COVID-19. And uh, COVID-19's related hunger has been linked to 10,000 child deaths per month. Estimates say that up to 132 children, or people rather, have gone hungry in 2020 as a result of the economic recession triggered by this virus. And in order to avert this hunger crisis, $10 billion is needed. <clears throat> so with so much going on in the world, I ask the question, how can I help? How can I make a difference? And you know what? The more I think about it, I realize I can't. I can't do much on my own. But when we come together, when we join as one, uh, we can do an amazing work. And so some of the things compassion has been able to achieve of 
uh, they've uh, distributed over 9.7 million emergency food packages to families in need, 6.6 million hygiene kits. Uh, they provided emergency, emergency medical care to over 780,000 individuals and over 320,000 cash transfers to families living in communities where the direct distribution of food and supplies has been uh, restricted. So uh, there are many of you who know who Compassion is, but for those of you who don't, uh, Compassion, uh, their mandate is to release children from poverty in Jesus' name. Uh, they are the world leaders in holistic child care, and uh, they are committed to the, the development uh, of children in their physical, cognitive, socio, uh, socio-emotional, and spiritual uh, needs of children living in poverty. And they do this by being Christ-centered, right? Uh, the transformative power of Christ in our lives is, is central to who compassion is. They are church-based. They know that when uh, they connect to the local church in North America and they connect to the local church in these impoverished nations, uh, there's nothing that we can achieve. Uh, there is power there. And they are child-focused because they know that the leaders uh, for the next generations are the children of today. And then when we uh, pour out value and dignity and worth into these children, they will become uh, who God intends them to be. <clears throat> so compassion uh, hasn't been able to operate how they normally have because of restrictions, because of lockdowns and quarantines. So instead of children coming to their local church or coming to their compassion center, compassion staff and compassion volunteers have been reaching out. And they've been doing this by checking in over social media. They have been delivering Bible lessons over mobile devices, and they've been spreading those messages through local radio stations. And by staying connected in these ways, not uh, only have they been able to continually meet the needs of these families, but they have been able to document some of the most amazing stories um, <clears throat> that have come out of this, this trying season. Uh, in Bolivia, a local church teamed up with a local food provider uh, to provide hampers uh, for families affected uh, by the virus that are either in lockdown or restricted have food, restricted food access. And so what happened is the, the local uh, police uh, got wind of what was going on and they decided to get involved. So now they uh, have provided transportation uh, for the local church to get these food hampers to the people in need. I just love that. There's a lady in the Philippines. Uh, her name is Mary Grace. And uh, right before her island village went into lockdown, she went into labor. And now in order for her to deliver her baby, she needed a C-section. So there was a, a compassion uh, volunteer who was able to drive her to the hospital and that compassion center was able to afford all the expenses associated uh, with this surgery. So in another amazing story, and lastly, I love this one because it's all about music. Uh, in El Salvador, there were dozens of teens that were just longing for connection. And so they were uh, you know, musicians and singers, and they gathered together online, and they put together an amazing worship song, and they created a community that uh, helped them through their lonely time of isolation. Um, you know, for compassion to fulfill their calling, uh, they rely heavily on on the local church here in North America and in the countries that they are operating in. So I'd like to show you a short video of a pastor, and this is his prayer for his community and the children living in it. Let's take a look. Dear Lord, May you gracefully guide me by this day. Do not let despair gain power over us. And please teach us to trust in you. Since the pandemic hit our country, sadness is stealing the smiles of many people again. For some families, the fear of hunger is much greater than the fear of the virus. Tears have fallen from my eyes countless times. Sometimes, I feel I can't take it anymore. 
But I have people by my side that never let me give up. Thank you so much for them. Help us remain encouraged and continue trusting in you. Thank you because you touch the sponsors' hearts and we are able to feed more than 300 families this month. I can see your promise fulfilled, O oh Jesus, when the last favorite are provided by your goodness. And I really miss hearing the children's laughter, see the joy in their faces, seeing them meet and run around. It's so hard to be apart from them now. But we know that even isolated, we are united, connected. Give me strength, O oh my King, and joy to go live today and share words of hope with my sisters and brothers. Help me to take care of your church while I also take care of my family. And we will rise again because you are with us. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. In November of 2018, my wife gave birth to our youngest daughter, Emery. Now, Emery was born with a very rare and severe brain condition called Sturge Weber syndrome. And in her case, uh, the left side of her brain uh, suffers from atrophy. It's shrinking, and this can cause uh, some pretty nasty seizures and strokes and a lot of other just really awful, awful things. And... Um, it's caused us to look at the future in a different way. There's a lot of uncertainty with her health. And, uh, you know, we just had to lay that down uh, and give that up to God. Um, and, you know, through that process, we have just been beyond blessed to see God in a whole new way, right? Um, what we didn't expect were these seeds of faith in our lives that were planted very early on from when I was a kid, uh, when I was a teenager, a young adult, all these seeds began to blossom. And these seeds are just seeds of truth, seeds of faith that began to hold us up and pull us through uh, this time that we really couldn't understand, right? We had so many questions that really didn't have answers to, and we were just we knew we were being called to just trust God uh, with everything that we had. But these seeds of truth uh, just spoke life to us. And I feel that is our responsibility as believers. We get to share that truth so that when others walk through their trials, when others through, walk through their fires, they can give God the glory and they can say, God, you have been so faithful in my life. I can continue to be faithful to you. This song is called Fires. I remember how you told me that life may not be easy. And everything that I need You've already given me I remember how you told me I can trust you completely So why am I doubting When you prove that you'd fight for me You've walked me through fires And pulled me from flames If you're in this with me I won't be afraid When the smoke billows higher Oh, it's higher And it feels like I can barely breathe I walk through these fires cause you're walking with me I'm changed by your mercy I'm covered by your peace I'm living out the victory doesn't mean I won't feel the heat 
walked me through fire and pulled me from flames. If you're in this with me, I won't be afraid. When the smoke blows higher, oh, when tired, you need. I walk through these fires Cause you're walking with me Oh, oh, oh. oh I can face anything Cause you're here with me I can do all things Cause you How he showed me the price of my redemption. Lord, how could I question when you prove that you die for me? You've walked me through fire. When the smoke billows higher, oh, it's higher, and it feels like I can barely breathe. I walk through these fires, cause you're walking with me. You know, I just want to close uh, with this statement. You know, here in Canada, we have so much, so much to be grateful for in a very practical way that we can show God uh, our gratitude is by sharing with those that need our help. So today I'm asking you uh, to sponsor a child, and that sponsorship will cost you $41 a month. That comes to, down to about $1.30 a day. Not only are you giving these children hope in their present circumstance, we have the opportunity today, this morning, to change their lives for eternity. So for those of you that already sponsor a child, I just want to say thank you. And for those of you uh, who are thinking about it and God is tugging at your heart, I would just encourage you to press in. Um, sponsor a child today. Change their life you won't regret it. Thank you so much for having me today. God bless you.